I've been playing games for my entire life. I was born in late July 2002 and I was able to see the culture around it. Whether it's the Call of Duty craze or playing new Super Mario Bros on the Wii with my sister, it was a concept that I knew had a following. But didn't get invested until the last year my family had the Wii U as their primary console. The console itself was the worst selling Nintendo hardware today. Today, I mostly play on PlayStation and had a Nintendo Switch since it launched in early 2017. Over the course of the 2020s, I've become much more aware of the industry and how gamers would invest in games in terms of time and which series and genres to go for. A topic I find fascinating is people saying that gaming isn't fun or it's not like it used to be. I agree that the games we grew up back then would not exist in the current climate as making money is one of the most important and significant aspects of the industry right now. But there's also a case that gaming is on the rise. It's been taken over mediums for decades and the new Grand Theft Auto 6 trailer reached over 100 million views in the first day, something only music videos were able to do. It's at an all-time high and when something becomes big, they will milk it until it can't no more. How can you get exhausted by this? I'll explain right now about why gaming is getting exhausting. There's usually a few games people would get for Christmas. The newest Call of Duty, yearly sports games, and then around one to four of our game people would also get. Of course, times have changed and now most gamers would want digital points for the Fortnite store or any game that has a microtransaction center. And then you have the evergreen title games such as Minecraft and Grand Theft Auto. And because of the system that capitalism puts on a gamer, they can easily get bored. Although this isn't every gamer, personally I invest in other games and wealth have played a major role in this. The yearly releases and the games that dominate the market are losing their touch. Call of Duty and Madden are now fatigued and consumers are deciding to try new games. Lethal Company as an example. Some invest in single player games but most would follow what their friends are playing with free to play live surface games with Fortnite, Apex Legends and Valorant being the dominant one. And because of people just following trends, they're not having much as fun as they used to. Of course, we can ask them to try playing an indie game or try a genre they never played before like an RPG. But here's a few things about this. The standard of living costs money, and people don't have the resources to buy any game they please. Some may have it easy, but most are trying to meet ends meet, and they can only afford to play with what they have. And while the classics are usually good, they can get exhausting if you overplay them. And how people spend is on an individual status, and some may only pay and play certain games, and that's okay. People can make decisions based on what is popular or if they're interested. But the biggest takeaway from the segment is the economics of it, and with a good chunk of the population wanting to follow trends, it can easily get bored. Maybe word of mouth with lesser known games that don't cost much without microtransactions may help the industry and bring more competition than ever before. However, the lack of innovation in major studios is also something to take a look at. I've mentioned that gaming is a business, so instead of doing something unique, why not play it safe and do something that will make the money? Many folks who have a voice have noticed this because without innovation or build quality products, people assume the AAA market is a monopoly. For example, EA bought the rights to have the NFL license in their Madden games and only EA can sell them. Because of this monopoly, they have no desire to compete or to build a better product and rely on people buying it every August and spend money on their player cards. The series has no personality and is the product of what a corporate video game would look like. And on top of the overworked developers, you and I can probably agree that this sucks and needs to change. But why? Is making money the intended goal? Of course! Madden is making billions and have no desire to step up their game. And with no competition for the NFL license, they can control the market. And the only way we could stop this is just not buy the product and watch the games instead or or better yet, play something else. I keep hearing about the Steam sales and people constantly talking about having a backlog of content to play because of their spending habits. I don't use Steam. The only computer games I usually would play are the Roller Coaster Tycoons and the Zoo Tycoon games back in the 2000s. I've always played on consoles and the games are usually on Nintendo Switch and on PlayStation 4 slash 5. And I don't buy a ton of games and I only get them if I really need them or when I'm feeling I'm running out of stuff to play. My backlog is small and I organize it in a way that I prioritize small small game and then prioritize the big one and only get a set amount until they're done. Whether I can beat it or can't, I will decide when it ends and it's usually when the story is beaten. I mostly just play single player games with online games being very rare for me. I'm usually alone but there's something I found out after I play games for a certain amount of time. It becomes a job, not in terms of content creation, that's a different subject. Many games can pad out its playtime with a ton of side quests and sometimes the gameplay can be pretty annoying. I usually play games once at a time and focus on a game would get me burnt out since it feels like it's been taking forever to get through. 
The game Alto Riza Ever Darkness in the Secret Hideout had an end game that is a drag to get through. The game has a final boss fight and usually this would end the game and give you the credits. But no, the main character is an alchemist who plays with matter with chemistry and they implement this idea into the game with a mix of crafting and a skill tree which I find to be interesting. But the game made this 65% of the game and after you beat it you would need to get items and then it's time to grind again. I didn't get these wind shoes early on so I need to make them but it requires this item and then this other item and it makes the experience a drag as a result of making it a glorified fetch quest. It ends eventually but this may my my final opinion on the game more sour and the entire franchise is like this. This was just a recent example of how annoying or certain experiences becomes a job. The original Kingdom Hearts has an unfair segment in the final boss that made me have a mental breakdown. Final Fantasy 16 has main story quests that feel like side content. Sonic Frontiers has an open world where it's hard to navigate sometimes. I couldn't get the hype for Among Us likely because I don't have other people to play with. And The Last of Us is an innovative and it's just another third person shooter franchise that relies on its story and premise to to be sold. And while there are many excellent games out there, these and many more can bring out the worst with meaningless grinds that just make the game longer than it needs to be. There's also one other aspect about the exhaustion of gaming, and it relates to something bigger outside the industry. This is an NBC News special report. Here's Lester Holt. The world we live in is always hectic and psychologically destroying us. Of course, I've mentioned the economics slightly early on, but that doesn't compare to wars, to online drama, to the desire of hate, and the ruin of people's lives. It's basically a part of the many problems with the world, and there's no signs of stopping. And along with work, mandatory events, and other responsibilities, it makes the hobby become less important, and the free time around it more like a responsibility. What I mean by this is that the industry continues to build bigger and better games, but likely, mistakes will happen, and those mistakes will become a grind that will get tiring. Of course, this won't be for every game, and there are some people like myself who will stand for the grind, but it's becoming a chore to the point where you get exhausted and move on to something else. Then again, it just might be a time to find something else to do. We are busy creatures and we need things to do and find purpose is important for ourselves in order to be productive. In conclusion, gaming as a medium is at an all-time high and there is no signs of stopping. But there are several issues ranging from money to our own psychological thought process that can affect how we view video games. I'm still gonna buy them and find something to enjoy in them, but the culture around them can determine the future of the perception and if companies and artists want to make games, then they'll need to make sure they can find that magic that is once lost and never found again and we find it again. The industry needs experimentation and a desire to make a good product and entirely profit. Otherwise, it won't be as interesting than what it used to be. Welcome to the deterioration of society.